Welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series where I break down the lore of sci-fi universes. If you enjoyed this, please like the video and be sure to leave any other questions you have in the comments below on your way out. This channel is supported by our lovely patrons, who keep these coming out at a regular pace. If you want to help out yourself, be sure to check out our patron linked in the description and in the top right. Since it's the Invictus time of the year, I want to start a new series of exposés looking at the various squadrons of the UE Navy, the men and women who changed the fate of mankind over the nearly 500 years they've been active. From the Breakers of the Tavaran to Vandal Hunters, these squadrons exemplify the highest qualities of human military service, often fighting desperate battles, being outnumbered and outgunned, and still coming out on top. Such is the case with one of the most decorated and well-regarded squadrons in the UE Navy, Squadron 214, known by their nickname, the Black Crows. Formed in 2675, they are part of a military buildup after the completion of Project Farstar. They are classified as a multi-level force applicator, which means the squadron fields multiple types of aerospace craft for a variety of operations. As it stands today, the unit consists of one flight of F-8 Lightnings, one flight of F-7A Hornets, one flight of P-5G Gladiuses, and their most famous unit, one flight of T-8A Gladiators, known as Bravo Flight. While members of Squadron 214 would like you to think the origin of their nickname, the Black Crows, comes from their cleverness and penchant for vengeance, the reality is a bit less glorious. When the squadron was first formed, it had a reputation for boasting. They were the first to achieve a perfect score in a hard plus rated simulated bombing run and let everyone know about it all the time. It got so bad they earned the name Branton's Braggarts after the initial commanding officer, Captain Charlotte Branton. To add insult to injury, their ground crews painted black crows on all of their ships as a way of showing their distaste for the squadron's constant cawing. By the time 214 saw action, the entire squadron had black crows painted on their ships and thus began to be known as the Black Crows. While the squadron as a whole is well regarded in the UEE, they've become most famous for their flight of gladiator bombers, known as Bravo Flight. They gained their reputation during their first action against the Vanduul Push of 2681. The flight initially composed of Aegis Typhoon-like bombers and fought the Vanduul approach from Orion to Tiber, tooth and nail, making the Vanduul pay for every kilometer of space. All the while, the flight pulled double duty as search and rescue craft up until the very last minute of the evacuation of Tiber. As a result, Bravo Flight has earned the nickname the Bloodthirsty Birds, and have become the bomber force the UEE calls on when they need a Vanduul threat eliminated. The record against the Vanduul has been impressive to say the least, having been credited with destroying a Dreadnought, four battleships, nine carriers, and countless fighters and support craft, the 214 also have seven Medal of Imperial Valor winners in its storied roster. One of their most famous exploits was even turned into a recruiting vid for the Navy called 12 Went In, recounting a 2720 assault by Bravo Flight on a Vanduul Harvester dropship, an attack which cemented the squadron's reputation as Vanduul Hunters. Since the introduction of the T-8 Gladiator in the early 30th century, the Black Crows have become the poster child for the ship, using it incredibly effectively against Vanduul threats. However, the most impressive feat the squadron has ever done was on August 9, 2932, during an incident which would become known as the Virgil Raid. The system of Virgil had been lost during the Vanduul push of 2681, the very same fight the Black Crows earned their reputation. It was a crushing defeat for the UEE, who were routed from system to system until they finally stopped the advancing Vanduul. It was a sore spot to the renowned squadron of Vanduul hunters that their reputation was born out of a desperate defense and not a heroic victory, like many of their more famous cousins. So when August 9th, 2932 came, it was seen as redemption. In the Vega system, on the border of Vanduul space, a detached UEE Navy battle group under the command of Admiral Bonds were called to action stations early in the morning. Starmen and pilots aboard the Bengal carrier, the UEES Typhon, scrambled to their stations and, for 12 hours, held their posts, guns ready for a feared Vandal strike, one that had been anticipated for centuries. When the all clear was given, the crews of the battle group breathed a collective sigh of relief. However, the real cause of the false alarm was becoming clear to the members of Bravo Flight, 
who were temporarily stationed aboard the Typhoon. Virgil's aging early warning satellite network had relayed a UEE distress signal from somewhere in the system. As a result, Admiral Bonds had requested his battle group jump into the system in force to respond, but was denied by the High Command, who had estimated a 55% chance that a Vandal clan was actively operating in the system, and Command did not want to waste the battle group on a hunch in a system that hadn't seen active human habitation in over a century. Morale aboard the Typhon was low. Here there was a military rescue beacon deep in the heart of one of the Empire's bloodiest defeats. At best, they felt the command was leaving one of their own, a fellow soldier, to die, and at worst, they were ignoring an opportunity to settle an age-old score with the Van Duel. Bravo Flight, the bloodthirsty birds, were not about to let an opportunity slip by to settle an old grudge. Fitting their gladiators with torpedoes, search and rescue gear, and stealth components, they launched six gladiators from the deck of the Bengal in total comms blackout. Flight leader Tam Thaxon had written a time-delayed message to his commanding officer shortly after his crews agreed to go along with the plan, all of them knowing they risked court-martial for stealing military equipment to go on an unsanctioned mission deep into hostile territory. The message explained their goal and ended with, We won't forget. Once in system, the crew triangulated the signal and discovered it was coming from the surface of Virgil 1, a once verdant and rich planet filled with tropical forests, being a key agricultural producer and vacation hotspot before the Van Duel turned it into a little more than a desolate hellscape with an atmosphere of swirling ash. Opting not to give away the location of the jump point to the Van Duel, Faxon plotted a long looping course that used more fuel but masked their approach to the planet. Unfortunately for Bravo Flight, it led them right into a Vandal patrol. Four scythes and a large command and control ship descended upon the flight of gladiators into a pitched battle, and Bravo Flight was forced to use their ordnance on the C and C ship to stop them from calling for reinforcements. In the end, Bravo Flight was victorious in wiping out the patrol, but at a cost. Bravo 3 had received a direct blade hit, which disabled the ship and killed the gunner, Paul Ransom. The pilot was forced to do a dangerous combat AVA to Bravo 5, whose torpedo bay had been swapped out for a search and rescue suite. Now down one ship, the flight pushed into Virgil 1 and entered the planet's atmosphere near its equator, where the now silent beacon was last heard. Flight leader Thaxon touched down near the location, while the rest of the flight performed a makeshift combat air patrol. Upon inspection, Thaxon discovered it was an old Wildcat deep space fighter. It lay in a clearing where it had went down hard and was little more than a burned husk. Near the wreck, there were skeletal remains of two humans wearing flight suits. Both had the insignia of the Black Crows on their suits, making them some of the original squadron that went down during the initial desperate fight for the system. A few meters away, he found the source of the signal an old black box recorder which had been struck with lightning and reactivated for a brief time. With time running short, the flight leader grabbed the dog tags of the pilots, buried the remains, and recovered the black box, stowing it safely in his gladiator before heading out. When the flight returned to the Typhon, they expected to be arrested, but instead were met as heroes. Incredibly, the black box recovered revealed that the crew of the Wildcat had opted to stay behind to cover the retreat from Virgil in its final hours going down fighting to allow the rest of the 214 and the Navy to escape the system safely, making Bravo Flight not only heroes, but preserving the memory of their lost ancestral heroes. The crows of the 214 continue to operate at or near Vandal Space today, doubtlessly participating in the Battle for Vega and the Battle of Oberon. The squadron that was once mocked as Branton's braggarts have come to earn their wings and right to crow but they seem to be on an unending quest to redeem their ancestors' sacrifice and bring the fight back to the Van Duel. Until then, the 214 will continue to serve as the bloodthirsty birds of the UEE Navy. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank my patrons on the screen now for helping me make this content. I hope you enjoyed the video. What do you think about the 214 and Bravo Flight? Interested in learning more about the other famous squadrons of the UEE Navy? Be sure to let me know what you think and more in the comments below. And as always, remember, ex Astoria at Astra.